uh, GSAS G1s, G1s of my heart, compatriots in this battle for knowledge, for scholarship, um, for really unlocking the secrets of the universe. My name is Chris Merritt, and I have the pleasure of being a fifth year graduate student in English, which explains my high level of fluency. And I am here today to tell you the 10 most important things you need to know about using the libraries here at Harvard. Number 10, the 10th most important thing you need to know about using the libraries is something that you might already know about graduate school, which is that this is a time of intense and everlasting penury. We don't make money here at Harvard. Graduate students <laughs> rarely do, but we really don't. There's no money here. You need to save money when you can. Trust me. I have, for example, been wearing this shirt for eight days. <laughs> but there are other ways to save money. One of them is to get yourself a USB key. Not unlike this one right here, which you will receive at the end of this session. This is one gigabyte of sheer possibility, people. And let me tell you what this is possibility for. You pay. You pay to do things like print or photocopy. You know what else pays? The environment. That's paper that you're using. That used to be a tree. Save a tree. Save yourself some bucks. Use your USB key to use the many scanners which litter. Dare I say? Yes, litter the Harvard University libraries. They are all over the place, and they are free to use. So scan what you need. Don't photocopy. Trust me, it's great, OK? There's also a great service called Scan and Deliver, which you'll see when you look books up in the Harvard University online library catalog called Hollis, which someone else will talk about momentarily. When you look them up and the little words come up, Scan and Deliver, that means that you can select portions from any of those books that have that Scan and Deliver option, and a dedicated librarian will scan that section for you. We'll PDF it to you, and you can read that section from the comfort of your own carol, office, home, when you're sitting under a tree pondering the mysteries of the world. You don't even need to walk into the library to access that chapter in the book. It's a huge, it's a huge aid if you're like really struggling to, to get your research done on a deadline. Great tool. Point number nine, the ninth most important thing you need to know is a little something called recall. Now, how many of you have seen the movie Total recall. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay, it's a very different group. Okay, so, well, it won't matter to you that this is actually nothing like the movie then. <laughs> but this, um, for one thing, recall of Harvard does not involve Arnold Schwarzenegger, which I know is a real disappointment for many of us. Um, but what happens when you have recall is that, you know, a, a book is out to a patron, and someone is enjoying really the, the ample information, the insight that is just spilled all over the pages of that book. And another patron needs it and engages in an act called recall, whereby the book is recalled to the library. It's a way of sharing. It's a way of participating in this happy, happy community of scholars that we are. Um, what's important about this is that, number one, you should feel free to recall books that you need, because we're all about sharing in this community. We're also about holding hands and singing Kumbaya, which we're actually going to do a little bit later, so I hope you're all prepared. But recall is something you also need to be wary of if you leave town. Because recall, like time, and the tide waits for no person. So if you're going to be out of town, overseas, in a library somewhere, if you're just on a retreat somewhere, you want to make sure that someone is here to re return any books that someone else might have recalled from you. Number seven which comes after number eight, which I will get to right now, which is how many of you in this room have ever had to assemble, say, a works cited list, or a bibliography, or a notes and footnotes? Raise your hand if you have had to do this. Okay. How many of you have ever wanted to gouge your eyes out with a pencil while doing that? <laughs> Should it be a comma? Should it be a semicolon? Does the translator name come before or after the work? You don't have to deal with that anymore, people, because here at Harvard, we have a selection of citation management tools, things like RefWorks and EndNote, things you're going to hear about in just a few minutes. These are little electronic miracles. <laughs> they save you the, I'm going to say, the trauma of having to produce works cited pages with a click of a button. All those, all those books you looked up, all those references you cited, they are all formatted for you in your paper. It is a beautiful thing. We're going to talk more about it. Use it. Start using it immediately. Like, use it from the first time you look up a book here at Harvard. It will save you so much time. I promise. Number seven. I'm going to talk about two little acronyms that you'll hear about. HD and ILL. HD, 
It's called the Harvard Depository. It's a magical space, which is located a little bit off campus. It's called the Harvard Depository because that is where many, many books and resources are deposited. And you can request those books, and they are borne to you on the wings of angelic messengers within a day. Those angelic messengers actually look a lot like trucks, um, and they arrive at the library ready for you within 24 hours. It's a beautiful thing. So if you are looking up a book and it says Harvard Depository, don't be discouraged. It just means it's coming to you. You just have to click the little button and request it. So go ahead and do it if your book is not available anywhere else on the campus. The other acronym is ILL, which stands for Interlibrary Loan. We do it. We do it well. There are really no limits to the kinds of interlibrary loan we can accomplish. We will search any library out there to find the object you need. If it's not here, and chances are it is because there are like millions of objects here, but if it's not here, we will find it for you. Now, it's a little known fact that skateboard punk slang in the 90s adopted ill <laughs> to mean really cool because of how awesome interlibrary loan is. It's true, it's true. You can look it up in the OED. Number six, those amazing librarians have also put together a plethora, an abundance, even a cornucopia of research guides. These are online guides which come in all sorts of different flavors. There are, for example, discipline or subject guides, and they range from everything from AFAM to zoology. So whatever your area of study is, there is a research guide online that'll tell you where to go to get the info you need. What kind of resources are available to you? What libraries have the cool special collections you need? So that's one variety of research guide. There are also course guides, so especially when you're teaching, this comes in particularly very handy. So we have course guides that are tailored directly to individual classes, both undergraduate and graduate, and they're all archived. So if you're interested in courses that were taught in art and architecture, or in gender and sexuality, we, or anything in between, or beyond, we've got them all. And there are also guides that tell you how to use various e-resources, like the aforementioned and to be mentioned at greater length RefWorks. And there is even, yes, a research guide for new graduate students in GSAS, which includes many useful things, including this top 10 list. Number five, while you are touring the elaborate digital environment of Harvard University's libraries online, you might also want to take a tour of the brick and mortar libraries. Now, here at Harvard, we have somewhere between 72 and 104 libraries. So that is to say we have so many libraries, we're not sure how many there are. But there are lots. And I'm serious when I say between 72 and 104. We have a law library, we have a Sanskrit and Indian studies library, we have a zoology library. We have a library for everything. For you? Hang on, I'm busy making eye contact with everyone here. <laughs> for you? There is a library. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Did I get you? Okay. Right. There's a library out there, and we want you to find it. But you might also have people come and visit you and say, Well, mm, so, mm, well, this is Harvard. Well, where do you go to do your thinking? Oh, so well. And you might want to take them to a library that they can actually enter, because even though you, with your magical ID card, can get into all these libraries, sometimes access is restricted to non-researchers. So you might want to consider taking them, for example, on a tour of Houghton Library, which is where all our rare books and materials and first editions live. And let me tell you something about them. They have everything there. In addition to first editions, things signed by the author, even if the author is, say, you know, Shakespeare, they also have things like Emily Dickinson's furniture, <laughs> Walt Whitman's coat, poet Dylan Thomas's liver. <laughs> I'm getting the sign, but actually that's not true. There are only two, <laughs> the only two of those threes are actually in the, in the collection. I'll let you guess which one. Um, but the point is, you can go and visit that. They have tours every week. There is also a tour of Widener that you probably want to get on this week if you, if you haven't already taken the tour of Widener. Just, just make sure that you take a look at all the libraries and just amble around. They all have their individual study spaces and sort of nooks and crannies to be discovered. Number four, while you're studying, as I mentioned you, you, you maybe want to do being grad students, you might want a carol. A beautiful little carol where you can call it your own intellectual space. You can check out your books to the carol. You can sit there and look out the window and ponder, you know, why am I going to graduate school in Cambridge where it's so, so snowy? Um, you might not think that today, but you know, give it time. Um, so the best thing to do is to sign up for your carol really as soon as you can. And it's just nice to have a, a dedicated space where you can go and 
and uh, you know put all the books that you're that you're working on. And there are seven different libraries at the university which will offer you carols as GSAS students. So you can pick the location that's best for you depending on your uh, on your discipline. So for example, the Loeb Music Library offers carols, as does the Fine Arts Library and Widener and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Number three. I am pleased to announce to you that you have now been liberated from the tyranny of the undergraduate 28-day library loan. Many of you will have suffered under what is an oppressively short period of time to have a book in your possession. Not many undergraduates will understand that you kind of need a book for years on end when you're writing a dissertation. And the Harvard University Libraries will help you do that. You can apply for an extended loan pilot, which means that any book that you check out from Widener, from the Fine Arts Library, or from Loeb will be yours for a whole term. And then you can renew that online five times. That's long enough to write a dissertation, I'm told. <laughs> By many people. Um, so do it. Sign up for that program. And you automatically get that privilege when you hit G4. But there's no reason to wait for G4. You can do it when you're G1, 2, or 3. So, number two. I want you to use the library websites. There are two in particular that we're going to talk about. And the addresses are, in case you want to write them down, hcl.harvard.edu. That is the Harvard College Library. That is the, sort of the umbrella organization of about, oh, give or take, a dozen libraries. And these are the ones that are probably most directly useful to you as GSAS students, even though there are many more libraries. So hcl.harvard.edu is a portal to those libraries that you'll probably use most often. Lib lib.harvard.edu, lib.harvard.edu, that is the other website, that is the portal to all the Harvard University libraries, all 72 to 104 of them, depending on how you count. And we are going to talk very shortly about those two, those two websites. But, you know, check them out, poke around, wander, meander, if you will. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to announce the number one most important thing you should know about the Harvard libraries. This is truly the most important thing you need to know. And it is the one thing that you have to, have to do. Please, please do this in the next seven days. Mark it on your calendar. Commit to it. Maybe even do it today if you can. Talk to your departmental liaison librarian. These departmental liaison librarians are amazing. There is one for every department, no matter who you are. There is a liaison librarian for you. What can they do, you ask? They can heal the sick. <laughs> they can fly. <laughs> they can jump tall buildings in a single bound. They are intellectual Midases. They touch your dissertation, and it turns to gold. Okay? <laughs> Talk to them this week. Meet your departmental liaison librarian. She can, he or she can answer all the questions you have about the libraries, about life, about <laughs> how we are to live in this world. They can do all of these things. Talk to them this week. I promise you it will make your experience here so much better. Honestly, let's level here. What's the number one reason to be at Harvard as a graduate student? The libraries. Nowhere else in the world will you find a larger collection of books with such extraordinary special collections. It is all here. It is the number one reason to be here. And the reason the libraries are so extraordinary is because of the librarians. So get to know them. Honest to God. They're fantastic.